Hi, I'm Richard Topping and welcome to Masterclass. Now, if you feel lost in a confusing world of errors and computer bugs, then fear no more. You're tuned to Masterclass, your guide to learning more about your PC. And today, we look at a web question in this letter from Michael. Dear Richard, I would very much like to make my website about Unreal Tournament look better than all the others. Please, please help me make the front page look the best. Thanks. No problem, Michael. You ask, we deliver. Now, those of you who've got uh, Unreal Tournament will know what a great game it is. It came out about six months ago, and it really is quite fantastic. The graphics are great, and there's some fantastic gameplay on it as well. And not surprisingly, it has spawned an awful lot of fans' websites. So what we're going to do today is show you how to take some screen grabs out of the game, collage them together using PaintShop Pro, and then use that as a banner at the top of your website. Now, obviously, you're not going to copy exactly what I'm doing today, but the principles will allow you to go and make, go away and make something that looks very snazzy, to use Michael's words. Now, I've started a game already. It takes a while to boot up, so I've got it up and running. And the key button that we're going to use today is F9. Once you go into Unreal Tournament, the F9 button does a screen grab and stores the load of them in a single directory. And that means that once you're into the game, you can just keep bashing that F9 button, get some great shots, and then we'll come out of the game and use those to make our nice collage of pictures. So I'm going to go back into the game now, see if I can actually uh, do some screen grabs for myself. I have got loads that I've been making this morning because um, it's a good excuse to play the game. So let's go and do game and return to the current game. That's the one I'm doing at the moment. I got shot a lot. I haven't been playing this a lot in my spare time, so I'm pretty useless as it happens. So no uh, letters writing in telling me how bad I am. So here I am. I'm in the game itself. And before I do anything else, let me do a quick F9. There we are. That's done a picture. F9 again. And I think I got shot there. Yes, typical. And I've just whizzed off into space as well, so that's going to kill me. That's not much good. And a tournament death match. There's some stuff there, some stats about the game that I'm playing in. And F9. Well, I think that's probably enough for the time being. I have got loads that I made already, so that's probably enough for the time being. So let's come out of the game. I'll do escape. Go game. Quit. Yes, I am sure I want to quit. As with most of these things, it takes far too long getting out of it and it does getting into it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Paint Shop Pro and I'm going to browse through some of those screen grabs that I've already made. So let's go into Paint Shop Pro, Programs, and it's under Graphics, which is near the top, and Paint Shop Pro 6, that's the one we've got. We kind of alternate between showing you how Paint Shop Pro 5 and Paint Shop Pro 6 works. Uh, an awful lot of people are still using version 5, and it's a great piece of software. This is version 6, slightly different, does a bit more, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which version you've got, you'll still be able to do much the same thing. So let's go into the browse, and that's really where things allow us to look at the pictures that we've made. So we'll come down to browse. And all of the pictures that we've taken are stored in a directory called Unreal Tournament System. And you can see it's rolling through, it's scrolling through and loading those pictures up into the memory. And what I'm going to do is just flick down these now. Let's make this full screen so we can actually get a better look. And here are all the ones that we've taken. Some of them I took earlier on. If I can go back here, find the ones that I've just taken. I can't see them very well on this screen, but you can see there's a couple of good gun shots down there. There's a, a nice orb shot there. And there's some, basically some good stuff here that we can use to make up our um, collage. OK, now the first thing we need to do is to create a new document. So I'm going to minimize this browse window, just make it a little bit smaller so we've got some space to play with. And then I go up to File, New. And what I'm going to do is make it like a banner. So it's going to be 700 wide, which is just a little bit wider than uh, your normal screen, and 200 high. And I'm going to give it a nice black background so we can just drop these pictures on there and make it look very effective indeed. So I'll say OK. And that is our banner. And now what I want to do is choose six photographs. I'm going to close the palette background down because that's getting in my way. And now I'm going to choose six of these different pictures that we can use to make up our collage. So let's pick one down here. That's a very good one. So if I double click on that, it'll open it. That's good. Now let's choose another few. Come down, double click on that one. That'll open it. Double click on that one. And that one. And I think I'll do one more. I'll do five instead of six, because I think today's going to be a very busy class. So we'll close down the browse window now that we've got all the ones we want. Now what I want to do, I'm going to create a collage effect if we do the banner like this, I'll have two big pictures here, and then I'll have three here. 
just like that. And then I'll have Unreal Tournament written across the top. So what I need to do is to choose the ones that I want, resize them, cut them to size, and then actually put them together on the picture to make a collage. Right, now what I need to do is resize these pictures one by one. So I'm going to do these two here. I think I'll make these 175, and then I'll make them 100, uh, 50, and 25, or possibly 150. 75 and 50. We'll see how it goes. So first one, let's make this one our first 100 picture. Now to resize it, very simple, go up to Image, Resize. Now there is a shortcut key, Shift S, and I'm going to use that later on just to save some time. So we'll do Resize. What I want to do is make it 100 high. I'm going to Smart Size it, so that keeps all the nice smoothness of the picture. That's down the bottom here. Resize all the layers and maintain an aspect ratio, because it's only the height that I want to change at this point. So I'll say OK. So that's been resized to 100. This one I'll resize to 100 as well, so I'll do Shift S, keep the same parameters. So those are my 200 pictures, move those over there. Then I'm going to do 275s, so I'll change this one, I'll do Shift S, so we'll change that to 75 pixels high, move that down, and change this one to 75 as well, Shift S. And then I'll make this one 50. So I'll click on that, do Shift S, 50. 5 oh. good. Now what I want to do is actually cut them and paste them and put them onto this one here so I can start laying them out. Now these are my 200, so I'll click on it, I'll do Control C, that'll copy it. Then I click onto my big banner and I do Control L, and that'll lay it down as a new layer. Now, I know you can't see that on the black background now, but we're going to do something later on that will really make that leap out of the page. So that's my first 100. I'll close that down so I don't need it now. I'll copy my second 100 one, do Control c onto my banner, do Control l It is important that you have these on different layers because the effect that I'm going to show you in a minute cannot be done unless there are different layers. So now I've got my 275s here. Let's do Control c back up to the banner, Control l Move that over there, and then let's do this one, Control C and Control L, that's good, so we've got rid of both of those now, and then the last one I need to do is the little one over here, Control C, up to my banner, and Control L, perfect. Now, like I said, you can't really see how these lay out on the screen at the moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to do an effect on each one of the layers. Now, what I want to do is put a glow around each one of these pictures. Now, the thing about PaintShop Pro is it doesn't have a specified glow effect on there. So we're going to fudge this. We're going to do a little bit of cheating right now and see if we can do something else instead. So what I'm going to do is go up to one of the uh, effects up here. Now, it doesn't matter what layer I'm on at the moment because we can just click and choose them as we go around. So I'll go Image effects, and the one I'm after is the drop shadow. Now you can cheat on this one, like I said. First of all, let's click up the dialog box so we can see what we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a nice bright colour. If I double click on that, that'll take me to the colour palette. If I want, I can make it a little bit brighter. That's fine. There's a very nice little feature. This both PaintShop 5 and 6 have this. You can choose the colour around the edge, and then the brightness of the colour in the square in the middle. So that's good. We'll choose that one. And what I'm going to do is have it opaque 100, have a blur of about 28.5, and I can bring that up a little bit. And the trick here is not to have any offset. Normally, you would have an offset on a drop shadow. But what I'm going to do is set it at zero so it goes right way around the edge equally. So it sits directly underneath. Let's put that to zero, the picture. And I'll say OK. Now, the great thing about this is you can now do it again. If you do it twice, Go Image, Effects, Drop Shadow, OK. That puts an extra bit of glow around the picture. So what we've got is one picture with a bit of glow around it. Now we need to do that to the other four pictures, and then we can put some text over the top. Now, there's no way around this, I'm afraid. We're just going to have to do it one by one. There's no cheating. So click on the picture that you want to change. Go to Image effects, 
drop shadow, yes, that's it, image, effects, drop shadow, so twice for that one, and then where's my, I only had two on that side didn't I, that's right, click on this one and then go image, effects, drop shadow, this does get a little bit tedious I'm afraid, especially if you're watching it, less so if you're doing it, and I'll do it one more time, it is worth actually doing this properly though because it does get a beautiful effect once you get it finished. Image effects drop shadow, yes, 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 and one more time. You can keep doing these, um, this uh, drop shadow on it more and more and more and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And obviously you want to see the effect that you're having on your particular page, but for our purposes today I think twice is more than enough to be honest, otherwise you'll get bored and just go make a cup of tea, won't you? Which isn't much fun to anyone. Right, effects one more time, drop shadow, Thank goodness for that. So look what we've got now. We've got our five pictures that we've taken out of the game. We've got that lovely glow effect around each of them. What I need to do now is I'm going to merge these layers. I'm quite happy with these now. And uh, having lots of layers in a picture is great. It's the best way to manage what you're doing. But it does take up a lot of memory. And it does mean that if you are doing something that I'm about to do now, put text, you have to make sure you get the text to the top. The best thing is get all your pictures sorted, flatten the layers. But it is fairly irreversible, of course. So what you want to do is make sure you get it right before you do that process. So let's go layers, merge, merge all, flatten. So now we've got this all as one layer, what I want to do is put some text on there. So I'm going to go to my text tool, which is down on the bottom left here. See that? Create or edit text. Click on it and my text uh, cursor will appear. If I then click onto the middle of the picture, what I've done is I've already put in the text real tournament. You should choose a nice big fat chunky font for this. We're choosing Arial Black, that's nice and big and fat, because what I want to do is put the text down there and, uh, and then put an effect onto the text. Now, the thing, the difference, one of the big differences between PaintShop 5 uh, Pro 5 and 6 is that in 5 you have to choose the colour for the font before you put it on the page. With this version you can change the colour once you're in this dialog box. Now I've already chosen the colour I want, I've got my nice green effect, so I'm quite happy with it, I don't need to change it. And 38 size font is just perfect for me to put it onto the page. I'll say OK. There we are. Oh, clicked on it again. Let's uh, undo that because I've now put two versions of it onto the page. Let's move that across. Now what I want to do is put a nice snazzy effect, to use your word Michael, onto the font. And what I'm going to do is go image, effects, and there's uh, some nice little icons on here that you don't get with version 5, by the way. And the one we're going to use is inner bevel. Click on that and you can see that gives us a load of choices. A bevel being uh, the side or the way something is shaped. And look, there's different designs here. We can have a very complicated bevel there. That's uh, created a very weird effect. We can have one with a little flat edge that goes around the side. We can even have one that's got a curvy sort of skirting board look to it. But I think the one that we were quite happy with was this one. You can change the width of the bevel. If I close it right the way up the top, you see there's no flat end on the top of the writing. If I bring it right the way down there, it gives a nice sort of flat effect on the top of the writing. And I'm quite happy with that. It can change all sorts of things, where the light's coming from, but I think that's quite decent. We'll say OK, and then I do Selection Defloat, and then do Selection None, and that then sticks it onto the page. And look what we've got there. We've got the beginnings of a fantastic looking banner. Now what I could do, of course, is put some more text up here if I wanted. Clicked on there, and say, Richards, okay. Richards, yeah, whatever, and then uh, change the style of the font, something like that, highlight the font, and then change it to Bell, oh that looks uh, particularly ridiculous doesn't it, and then I'll just whack it down on the page and that could go up there. Either way, what I've done is created a banner that started to look really decent indeed. And what you want to do is get your own pictures, get your own creativity going, and you can make something that looks absolutely fantastic. Now, what looks really fantastic to me is when I turn on my PC in the morning and I see racks of emails. So you need to send them to me straight away. The address is masterclass at sky.tvchannel.co.uk. And for backup information, why don't you check out our .tv website and you'll find that at www 
www.tv channel .co.uk or why don't you scribble a note to .tv PO Box 24121 London SW18 1WN There you are, my cack-handed efforts at making a banner have actually come true. Hopefully that helps Michael with his yearning for a second-to-none website about his favourite game. If you want to learn more, then do get in touch. See you next time. Goodbye.